Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Well, the deal that's been in the works for two years now is coming up the road. everybody that last piece of the d2 puzzle i was telling you about is right here that's right but first iron man 3406 how are you now i'm doing good how was my canadian was that passable or yeah, you okay forgot, you forgot the a oh yeah okay so you wouldn't you wouldn't believe how many people think this is canada so we're gonna play ask the expert here okay <laughs> he is from canada is this canada no no, this is good because, you know, so many people start telling me it's Canada, I kind of start having doubts, but that's what I thought. This is not Canada. So, Iron Man found this cab, what is it? I believe it was June 2020 is when you first texted me about this. That's so right. <laughs> and it is literally a barn find, correct? It was in a barn, was up a barn. in the rafters of a barn, actually. Yep. And you mentioned they were doing some blacksmithing in there and it was quite covered in soot. It was almost all black. And luckily that seems to have really went a long way towards preserving the original finish. It has the original canvas on the top. The original wood is intact. I mean, the hardware, it still has the guide tail lamp on it. Um, light brackets on the front. We have the old cloth wrapped wire yet and knobs and tracks and sliding doors and glass and it's a mixture of wood and metal and glass and canvas and it's just awesome. It's literally something I never ever thought I'd ever actually see. So like I said, barn find cab and uh, Iron Man 3406 here, Nathan, he has the whole story on it. I know you've given me bits and pieces of it, but you can tell it a lot, probably a lot more complete than I could. So sure. how did you find it? How did you come about actually getting it? So how I found it was, um, so I worked for the cat dealer back home and I'm kind of the antique guy that everybody calls me when they got questions about mm -hmm. old tractors. So a kid phoned one of our branches, said he had this D2, a 5J D2. He couldn't get it started. He was wondering what it was worth. He wanted to sell it, yada, yada, yada. So me being the person that I am, I said, well, do you really want to sell it? Like, you know, it was part of their family for three generations. I said, maybe I just come down, I'll help you get it running. And mm -hmm. then you have, you know, your grandpa's tractor, yeah. whatever. That's more valuable to me than having another D2 and he gets to enjoy it. So I went down there and we got tinkering away. And as we were fixing things, we were working on the carb to get the pony motor going. And we needed some gas. He's like, oh, we got a whole crib load of old parts for this thing. I'll take you through the barn. So we went through the barn and we're going through this cabinet. And sure enough, a bunch of old gaskets and parts and everything. Got all the parts I needed for the carburetor. And just happened to look up, <laughs> and in the rafters of this barn is this cab, um, all covered in pigeon crap and and black soot, like like you mentioned from from the blacksmithing that was happening. And had room. you not looked up, you'd have probably walk right underneath it, and not even know it was there. Right? Yep, just happened to look up in the right spot at the right time, hmm. and um, so I started in, you know inquiring about it, how it like did it belong to the D two, what was the story on it, hmm. and the kid basically told me that when his great grandpa bought this tractor, he bought it so that they could pull a hay wagon. And they were loading hay in the wintertime, so they wanted the cab so they could keep, you know, out of the elements. But they found out that <laughs> because they didn't have a whole lot of hired hands, they needed to put the tractor in gear, engage the clutch, and then they'd walk along the hay wagon chucking bales. Oh, okay, yep. But to get in and out of the cab while the clutch was engaged was just too much of a pain mm -hmm. in the butt. And then to get back in after, so they just said, you know what, we're gonna take the cab off. They hoisted it up into the rafters and that's where it's at ever since. So it wasn't on the tractor for that much time. To be they figure a couple of years, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And it shows because there's very little weathering on it. There's very little degradation, really. Yeah, it's just fortunate that it was under a covered roof and it was up off the floor. So, I mean, it wasn't getting 
attacked with moisture and rodents and yeah. aside from a little bit of pigeon stuff that was on it, it, it took a lot of scrubbing but it cleaned out good. <laughs> I bet. So we kind of kept going on with the day working on the D2, working to get it started, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And end result, we couldn't get the pony motor started. It was just too far gone. Didn't have enough compression, so we hooked the John Deere, John Deere tractor onto the Caterpillar to pull start it. Um, that's a lot of fun if you want. There's a whole video. <laughs> He's got the video. I'll pop the link in the corner in case you want to go check it out. But and um, so before I was leaving, I was like, so so what's the scoop on the cam? I said I really want to you know see if we can come to some sort of agreement or whatever. And and we did. We came to an agreement. And and uh, later that winter, I went down and picked it up and took it home. I believe that was around November 2020 you yes. texted me some pictures of getting it out of the rafters because I know there was some snow that had already come in because there were some, some yep. Uh, yep. holes, holes in, the in the roof. and So I mean good thing we got it out of there when we did because the, you know the roof on that barn was starting to show its age and who knows how long before it just started falling in on itself mm -hmm. and yeah. this would have been destroyed with it but the day I went and got it it was about the worst <laughs> the worst day that we had in the winter for driving. Um, was, I saw some of your dash cam footage, <laughs> and the, the road was pretty much as white yeah. as the yeah as everything else. Yeah, it was. And then when I went to fuel up to top it all off at the co-op, they filled my diesel tank with gas. Oh! So, <laughs> it was just, but it all worked out. Got it home and started cleaning it, and kept using the loop while we were getting her tidied up, and and that was right about the time the borders all shut exactly. down and. It's stuck. It would have been here a lot sooner otherwise. <laughs> yeah, and it's stuck there, and I am back here, and I wanted to tell everybody about it so bad, but it, it's one of those things that until everything actually works out, and with all the other circumstances that were going on, yep. nobody knows how long this stuff's going to last, where everything's going to land. I just decided until I have that bird in my hand, <laughs> we're just going to kind of keep it in our back pocket. And, yeah, um, definitely a lot of... A lot of stuff just had to come together and happen just right. Like I said, you could have walked right underneath this and just been looking at everything on the floor and, and back out of the building yeah. and not even known it was there. Yep. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah, I know why it's it's definitely a piece of history that deserves to be preserved on this beautiful tractor. <laughs> so with this basically being original condition, you had original paint, original canvas on the roof, that's something I can't believe never weathered off. That's another big reason why I want to keep as much of 5J1113 in its original finish as possible because I will never refinish a piece like this. You know, you've got a little bit of wood showing through, but for the most part, the paint is all intact. It's just showing some honest age. And yeah, it's just a perfect fit for an otherwise original machine made to look as original as possible in the ways that I couldn't help but... Uh, have to alter but just a quick walk around of it yeah this roof is i mean the styling of these things is really something it's got the class i mean the way that the roof overhangs at the front and the roof is not flat it's curved both ways and just to see how they constructed it it's like this is all tongue and groove wood up in here i don't even know how they did that if they put all those pieces together first and like steamed them on a form to get the curvature both directions, I don't even know. But wooden cross slats that go all the way across, three of those, and the hardware in here. I never realized there was so much metal in one of these cabs. You have these thumb wheels right here that keep like the windshield closed and the back window is a pivoting version as well, but you have to unthread these. the back window tilt it out secure it in place with the upper knobs you have rear facing ventilation as well love it nice handle for closing it up again thread knobs back in to secure all closed up and Nathan pointed out all the wiring in here 
they used the old guide lights that had the system where they grounded to the tractor chassis through the bracket. And here's your power wire used to connect the light. But because these brackets are bolted to so much wood, that breaks continuity to the, tra to the tractor chassis. So for an even better view, we have the ring terminal that's on this wire. This is your power lead for the lights. And you can see it runs all the way up the edge right here and then it splices off. It kicks all the way over across the top to the power feed for the lamp on that side, splices out to the power feed for the lamp on that side. Also runs back along the top of the cab and then down and then out right there to go out to the tail light and then the secondary ground wire you can see is grounded to this bolt right here which is the top bolt for this light bracket out here and we also tag off of this lower bolt for right here the light bracket on the other side so both of those circuits basically ground the light through the bracket into the bolt into the wire and then that ground wire comes down here and it actually solders to this metal clip right here. The metal clip makes contact with this metal uh, frame bracket right here, which makes ground contact to the fender of the tractor. And that's how you get power out and ground back. So even though we've got it mostly right, we're running dedicated ground circuits, we're still relying on just contact to contact ground. Same principle that those lights utilized if they weren't mounted on wood, even if they're just mounted on the tractor contact ground that was um that was the name of the game back in the day okay so i had to do it i went and got my rd6 seat cushion and threw it in here and sure enough this seat box is a good four inches wider on each side even than that couch like rd6 cushion so we have to test it out right i'll just shoot my feet out the no hole in the front, but um, yeah, this is um, this is really nice. I I never thought I'd be on a D two seat that's more like a couch. I just love love that rough. That's what can I say? <laughs> Side door slide. So I'll have you reach in. There's a plunger inside. You pull on that. It's spring loaded. And once that's pulled out, door slides, and then that plunger pops back into that hole right there, keeps the door open so everything's on wheels. I'll protect it underneath this rolled edge right here. There's your catch, of course, grabs the bottom corner of the door. Here's a handle. I gotta believe this is for like uh, climbing onto the machine because it's, it's fixed right to the rest of the cab. And we have all of the uh, lubrication points on the decal yet. In here, we have the uh, diesel engine manufacturer's decal intact yet looking out here there's the patent tag which on 1113 happens to be on top of the fender right here usually they're more like on the side of the seat box on the later tractors but because all that would have been replaced by this cab they go ahead and they put the patent tag out there but this is really neat you can see all of the different sections layers of wood the veneer layer the structural layer most of the glass is all intact yet. Awesome, awesome find. All the small details like this drip edge on the back, it's gonna keep everything from going straight down that back window. And like I said, you can see where the bolts went through that held that old seat back cushion on. And of course, there is where the seat tank resides right there. And now this is where, oh, I don't know if I showed you the old guide lamp. You can see the guide stamped in there. It's even got the tail lamp on it yet. And it looks like a clear lens down there, like for when it would shine on a license plate on a car. It looks very similar to that. But because of the construction of this cab, you cannot bolt it on with a standard D2 seat tank because these required a special seat tank that did not have these armrest sides. So all this material would have to be cut away in order for this cab to fit on this tractor. Toolbox has to be removed from the fender and they also utilized a couple of steel angle braces that were quite large that used utilized this bolt pattern for the final drive, bolted into the fender and came up and supported the fender on each side to help support the weight of that cab. So even though it's here and 
it's made for 1113 or a D2 like 1113. The trouble we have is it's still not bolt on ready, so that means I'm on the hunt for another seat tank because I'm not going to cut this seat tank apart for this tractor. It's matched to the rest of it and it's still in way too good a condition. So we're not going to see the cab on the D2 today, but this cab will be on this D2 eventually. There we are. We got the door all closed up again. So the shop's not big enough. I'm trying to get the D2 and the cab both in frame at the same time. It's not working out too well, but yeah, this was that last big piece I kept telling you about. And like I said before, we've kind of had this deal in the works for the last two years. And with everything that's went on, it was something that it could have fallen through. It could have worked out. We didn't know. And thankfully everything worked out. So everybody, huge shout out Ironman3406 on YouTube. Go check out his channel. And you brought this thing like how many miles, kilometers? The total trip from where I found it, got it to my house down to here is about 1100 miles. Yeah, um, and went through all the border checks, getting it clean enough to get across the border, the documentation to get it across the border. Uh, that's, well, that's a level of commitment. Saving it from the rafters of a Canadian barn that was ready to fall in on itself. That's the kind of commitment that, I mean, that's, that's an awesome thing. That's what saves all this stuff and it keeps it around and it gets exposure, you know, to other people that can hopefully build an interest in this hobby. You know, this, for us, it's like recreation, but there were people that actually, this was their living. That was their living. They worked with these things back in the day, you know? So, um, but anyway, go out, check out Nathan's channel, Ironman3406. I'll put a link in the description down below, throw them some subs and you guys have like, it's a family business. You've been in the cat or moving business for several generations now, right? Yeah, it'd be, it was the third generation when I was still there, but gone to the dealer now but yeah 1967 grandpa started into the dirt movement so we got we got some big toys and you have quite a boneyard full of interesting things we right do, yes <laughs> so a lot of good stuff on his channel a lot of good videos and uh you're gonna do like an equipment yard walk around one of these days it's aren't all you? Shot. i just gotta so, to put it together <laughs> it's uh it's on the way lots of good stuff click on over give them some subs give them some watch minutes same for here thanks for watching everybody um Let's say we uh, turn the cameras off and actually go have some fun, huh? Let's do it. All right. Thanks for watching, y'all.